Ken started the Institute 25 years ago. He's a serial entrepreneur who's created many startups and he's been active in leadership and philanthropic roles. And he's seen a lot of changes, of course, in the way that businesses operate and what that means for leadership. So it's great to be able to pick his brains now. Please welcome Ken Gunn. I do time after time. Thank you, Ken. I, I promise I won't give you a 7.30 style grilling. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, how did the CEO Institute come about? Well, I was running a uh, management consultancy, Aster Management Consultants, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and I was uh, concerned about the feast and famine cycle. I think we, we, we heard a bit about that uh, scenario uh, today where you were flat out doing work and then you were flat out chasing work. And uh, I wanted to come up with a, a more sustainable business model. I decided that I wanted to really find a niche, and I guess this gets back to specialisation, um, and build a reputation in a particular area. And I decided uh, through the consultancy work I was doing that I wanted to deal with the ultimate decision maker. Quite often we went in and did a pitch to uh, senior managers and then the faceless board or CEO that we never got to would say, no, um, we're not going to take that uh, assignment on. And uh, so I had this criteria uh, that, I, that I set up and um, and it took me about a year for everything to crystallise and fall into place. And I was uh, holidaying over in Perth and I had that light bulb moment when I thought, I know what I'm going to do. Now, I don't know whether it's the water over there in Perth, that's where so many entrepreneurs uh, have been born, but it was a great idea, I thought. And uh, so I... I uh, uh, I was uh, then ready to uh, get home and uh, and and uh, test test it. And so then, what happened when you got home and then you sort of tested the waters? What was the response like? Well, I I, I put a bit of documentation together. I moved quickly. I suppose I was agile. Uh, <laughs> Twenty five years ago, and. Uh, um, and, and I thought, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on this. And I went out and I spoke to a number of CEOs. I spoke to friends that were, were CEOs. Um, I said, great idea. That's what friends do. Um, uh, but I, I, did, I did speak to others that, uh, that I didn't know. Um, and I felt that I had something uh, here. And uh, so um, it took me three months and I got the first group up and running in uh, June uh, uh, of 1992. And was it like, did the program run like this? Was it a large group of CEOs talking about issues that were common across the companies? Or what was no, the we, format we, like? We had, uh, to start with, we, we, we had a small group of eight. Uh, they all signed their confidentiality agreement uh, so that, they, you know, Chatham House rules and, and so... Uh, they're encouraged to uh, not talk at the uh, superficial, superficial level and, and really get into the, uh, the issues that mattered. Um, so it was very much this experiential learning model that uh, I'd, I'd put together. And uh, so uh, it, it was uh, also predicated on the revenues of the, of the members. So I wanted to put people in... In, in syndicates, as we called them, based on their turnover or revenue range. When we were out having drinks before, somebody was telling me at the first meeting, one of the points of discussion was, is it worth our time for our business to have a website? <laughs> Isn't it amazing when you think in 25 years, you know, that was, that was 25 years ago. Have some of the topics of conversation remained the same across the 25 years or has it transformed entirely? Well, uh, the topics have changed to a certain extent, but uh, uh, people management issues was absolutely number one when we started. I think it would have been uh, uh, well over 80% of the discussion about people. Uh, as time has gone on, uh, sort of fast forward now, certainly technology is right up there with people management issues. And I, and I think we heard today uh, you know, that we've got to embrace technology, the digital age, and, uh, and of course in our syndicate meetings all around Australia, uh, the, that is a, a, a really a hot topic. 
um, but also um, growing in prominence is your disruption, um, your agility, innovation, governance is still a, is a, is a growing issue and one of, of, of ongoing concern, uh, and business models, people talking about different business models. What is what are the implications of those things for leadership? You know, what does a CEO today need that 25 years ago was different, if that is indeed the case? Well, I, I think that the the world is different uh, uh, to what it was um, 25 years ago. Um, we're moving a lot faster, and and we have to move uh, a, a, a lot faster. Um, certainly the internet has changed our lives and, um, and CEOs have got to be a lot more tech savvy than what they were back when I, when I started. You uh, can't rely on somebody to handle that stuff for you. Mm. Yeah. As you look back over the years that the CEO Institute's been operating, what are some of the key uh, moments of success and milestones that come to mind? Well, I, I put number one our stakeholders, and here I'm, I'm talking about our management, our staff, um, our chairman, uh, and our members. Uh, they're, they're all critical success factors uh, in, the, in the business, and we've been blessed to have great people. And, uh, and, I, and I think that when I look around the room and, uh, and when I've heard the discussion today, there's a lot that's been said um, that um, I thought, yeah, we're doing that, uh, but it's great to have it, it, it reinforced and for people to give up their time uh, for half a day, once a month, to uh, keep themselves abreast of what's going on in the business world and share their experiences and, and say, well, we've got to keep learning. This uh, concept of lifelong learning, that, that's just so important. And uh, so our members, they really do set themselves a, apart from, I think, other business leaders, and, and that's great. And our staff, there's a, there's a tremendous passion there about the business. The other thing that's important to us uh, has been a, a success factor, has been our own technology. We've got a a database which we call CEO Hub, and that manages our business uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And we put that in the in the cloud um, a couple of years ago, uh, and that was important for our plans to expand internationally. We couldn't have even contemplated going overseas without having our database there in the in the cloud, and it's with Amazon. Um, uh, the uh, so so that's. Um, that's been important. And, and I think our brand, the, the CEO Institute brand, um, is another great success factor. The company was called Aster Managements when we started off in 92, and we changed our name to the CEO Institute. And that's, um, I think that's been a, a real success in doing that. And uh, uh, it's well recognised, well respected in the, in the marketplace. And uh, we've actually registered as a trademark in 47 countries over what, the time we've been going. What about um, certification and UNESCO recognition and how important is that been? Oh, that's been a game changer. And I, I, I could probably sit here and talk for hours on certification. I can remember when I told people that I wanted to set, a, set the CEO Institute up as a certification body for chief executives and senior managers. They said, you're mad. Um, it won't happen. Um, I can understand we've got certified practicing accountants, and I was one many years ago. Um, but uh, I said no one will buy it. But in 2011, I, uh, I decided I was going to do it, and uh, I approached UNESCO, and uh, they embraced the idea. And, and they recognised us as a, as a global certification body and we, uh, we've got a testimonial to that effect. We've actually entered into a partnership with UNESCO and we support the Malala Fund for Girls' Right to Education. Uh, and we've been doing that for nearly five years now. The, um, we decided also that we've got to secure this position in the marketplace because if we don't, someone else is going to uh, 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 try and copy us. So. We trademarked the post nominals, as I call it, CCEO, and uh, as a certification trademark, 
And as such, we had to uh, prepare the, the rules for certification. And in Australia, where you've got a certification trademark, those rules have got to be approved by the ACCC. So we got all that done. And then we uh, took out certification trademarks in New Zealand, Malaysia, Singapore, the USA. We're actually in the USA with a certification trademark. And the UK. Um, and we've got now approximately 300 uh, certified CEOs in our network. And, and I'm seeing this as a really long-term initiative. We're certainly we're passionate about it. We're going to be persistent about it. Um, and we're going to get the message out there to employers and other stakeholders that if you're employing CEOs, if they're a certified CEO, then uh, you can trust uh, that, uh, that certification. It's going to tell you that that business leader has got capability and, and competence. And, and our, our members in the CEO Syndicate program, they're spending up to uh, uh, 55 meetings before they'll, they'll get be entitled to certifica full certification. Uh, so that's a lot of knowledge that they'll be acquiring and they've got to have been a CEO for five years or more. And so what's sort of next on the horizon? You mentioned before a bit about the global expansion and so forth, obviously trying to um, all the time raise awareness of that. What's specifically on your horizon? Well, the big thing on the horizon right now is that uh, we're working on a online program, which we're calling the Certified CEO Program. Um, and we're trademarking that also in 47 countries as we speak. Uh, we're, we're wanting to uh, have a, an online offering for people that are uh, probably uh, haven't got the time to attend the, the monthly meetings or in geographic locations where we don't, don't exist. Um, over the last few years, we have been getting inquiries for our syndicate program and our future CEO program for senior executives, um, you know, almost one inquiry a day. Uh, and uh, people wanting to get a, a certified CEO designation. And so it, the penny dropped as an opportunity here. And so we're partnering uh, with um, the University of New England. Uh, they will be uh, providing uh, the content for the course, it'll be at MBA level, and uh, and right here and now, I'm talking to some global HR organisations, um, so that we'll have a, a distribution channel. So probably, I'm hoping in the next three to four months, we'll have the course um, finalised, uh, ready to go to market, and uh, we'll hit the road running. Uh, I expect we'll we'll have a distribution network at l in at least thirty countries. Excellent, Ken. Thank you very much. <laughs>